Mapping for Change is a social enterprise founded in 2008 and is based on over 15 years worth of research within UCL. And our main focus is really to support communities and to give them a voice. And we do this through the power of mapping. We want to give people a voice and enable communities to make a positive difference and transformations in the communities within which they live and work. Any project that we're involved in is led as much by the communities as it is by us or those that commission us to do a particular piece of work. My name is John Evans. I'm responsible for environmental health in the City of London and as a result we look after air quality and air quality monitoring, looking after our residents and so on as well. We thought it was important to perhaps do some work on the biggest residential area of the city in the Barbican. So as a result we started talking to them and saying well do you want to be involved? And it's been a very positive result. We were talking a while ago about how great it would be to actually set up a residence group for Air, you know, air quality champions effectively and so um, when the opportunity of going to the GLA and getting the Clean Air Fund money came up we sort of, um, well we supported that um, in our sustainability group on the estate and then obviously when she was successful um, part of the deal was that we would set up this um, uh, citizen science project here which has been fantastically well sort of accepted by the residents they've been really really keen about it. Uh, we were having an increasing amount of black dust in the flat uh, so all the surfaces you could notice were even if you dusted every couple of days um, that was settling on you know shelves, window ledges, everything and that must be what we're breathing in and um, I have asthma so finding that that was quite troublesome. People are becoming increasingly aware of issues like um, air pollution and clearly there are health effects um, from the sort of level of, of uh, pollution especially in a big city like London mm. and so when um, this was advertised around the estate I thought well that's something I can get involved in it doesn't take up a lot of my time mm. and it's one of those things where if you get lots of people doing a little bit it adds up to something that's big and important. Uh, we moved here about 18 months ago from just on the edge of the Greenbelt in Hertfordshire. I think we were probably conscious that the only tiny downside of moving to the Barbican was that obviously you were going to be in the middle of the city and therefore pollution levels were going to be higher. I think we were both, uh, my wife and I, we were both surprised when the first results came through from the project to see just how high the pollution levels are and it really made us feel actually really to be good to be part of the project um, if only to provide evidence for whatever authorities it is to actually do something of what is patently a serious uh, a serious problem. I've been coordinating the other residents um, primarily um, and I also look after the street level diffusion tubes which are 17 um, at various locations around the estate. Every time there's a changeover, I get um, I send out emails to people to remind them to come and drop them off at Shakespeare Tower. Um, we've organised um, two um, well um, meetings, one sort of initial meeting and then a follow-up meeting sort of halfway through so that people could find out what was happening. And then we were also doing um, walkabouts with um, particle monitors. So I was um, basically dishing them out to three different residents every week and then they were dropping them off, us downloading the data, sending it off to Mapping for Change and um, then charging them up and charging the meters up and sending them out again the next week. So that is one of the tubes which, as you can see, looks over um, Thomas More Garden. And even though it looks over the garden, it's still above the EU norm. This is the tube at the back which has a much higher reading than the one at the front. Um, and the main reason for that, as you can see just below us, are the two sort of ventilation ducts out of the Beach Street Tunnel. Um, so the great moment came when, of course, as you know, Beach Street was effectively closed or nearly closed to traffic, and suddenly both the readings dropped quite dramatically. I mean, what's particularly um concern me really is that we've had 
the results, individual results from each of our tubes. So I know the level of nitrogen dioxide just outside my bedroom window. And it is above the EU safety limit. So that is something that is concerning. And obviously if, you're, if you've got kids or, or indeed old people, um, it is quite worrying. Because one of the things, one of the readings that came up that was really quite shocking was the level of pollution in the um, Beach Street Tunnel which um, it's a tunnel so it's an enclosed space cars and lorries and buses and taxis are going through it the whole time but when we saw the first readings from that which were well above the safety limit it did I did persuade me not to use it as a shortcut unless it's raining very hard being involved in the project has made us more um, thoughtful about the fact that if uh, we feel that there is a problem then we can we can do something about it and that it's important to measure it to get the facts and figures but then once you've got the information that you can do things to improve the situation. So I think it's really important to um, you know to, to be able to look at the air that we're breathing in and and be able to you know give facts and figures because it's all very well people saying oh well, you know it seems to be um, uh, you know my asthma's worse or you know I find that um, you know kids have got more coughs and uh, but I think you need to know exactly what it is that you're breathing in and, and then you can work on Definitely. solutions from there. Definitely. It's really interesting getting the data. I mean, residents have been really interested in going in looking at the map and I think everyone was quite shocked that the inward facing flats, I think those residents thought, oh well, you know, we're fine, you know, if we're facing the garden. But actually, um, the, the revelation that in fact it, there wasn't such a great difference between the outward facing and inward facing really brought it home to them that there isn't anywhere that you can hide. Um, so yes I'm sure um, I think the city is actually doing other work with residents down at Mansell Street and it would be great from our point of view to actually um, meet up with them and sort of swap experiences because I think if we think Beach Street's bad. I mean, Mansell Street itself and that area is absolutely appalling, and that isn't in a tunnel. Um, there's lots of really, really heavy traffic, lorries and, um, and stuff going down Mansell Street. So anything that we can do to, you know, solidarity with them would be great. It's reassuring that we were somewhere along the right lines in what we were expecting. I think what it's also been useful is for the residents to see for themselves through walking around, not just here but also in the rest of London, exactly where they are exposed to air, poor air quality. Did you think that having the information displayed on a map was a good way of going about documenting the evidence? Yes, obviously we do air quality modelling and it's really interesting to then see for ourselves exactly what the real picture is. So we're then able to say to residents and others who are interested, this is exactly what sort of air quality is at given times, given levels as well in, in terms of the height above the ground and all these different locations. So yeah, it was a good way of representing exactly the real picture. The knowledge gained by communities by participating in these types of citizen science processes enables them to make links between their local actions with bigger global and national issues. An example of this is in spring 2014 where we had the Saharan dust storms which impacted the air quality across the whole of England negatively was also picked up by the efforts and the monitoring that was being undertaken by local residents within the City of London. We have led and supported a number of air quality monitoring citizen science type programmes across the whole of London and we're increasingly being encouraged by the number of community groups and citizens not only wanting to participate but also initiating these types of activities. The more people participate in these types of activities, the more people become aware and start to think about the measures that they can take to reduce their exposure to poor air quality, but also how they can actually start to get involved in the decision-making processes that occur at the local, national and global level. Air pollution is much worse than most of us have realised in London. We're worried about particles and gases with nitrogen dioxide being the main molecule that we're worried about in the gas component. The project that UCL has run, Mapping for Change, with people at the Barbican and the City of London, is the best project of the kind that I've seen. It really does bring home at a very human level 
the big issues that we talk about when we talk about enforcing laws and getting people to build public understanding of the dangers of air pollution with advice for people on protecting themselves and reducing pollution for themselves and others. I really do congratulate Mapping for Change and the City of London for building up or encouraging enthusiasm within the community to actually take part in this project and commit to it for a whole year. It really is tremendous and I'd like to see local authorities across the whole of London copying this model. It really is a masterpiece of engagement and it's a very successful model for others to follow. Thank you.